Okay, so we're getting ready for those who I'm seeing in real time for a July Monday morning yoga practice. Um, I thought today we would lie on our backs and just move around a little before we even focus on the breath. So the um, just transition here, just coming onto your back. If you prefer to sit and uh, you know focus on your breath right away, that's fine too. But just to kind of transition from whatever you've been up to today or whatever your weekend was like, you can do a full body stretch. You bring one knee in and hold there for a bit or go side to side. And maybe just a little bit of freestyle movement, arms and legs moving like you're in the water or floating and flying in the breeze. And I'm just going to do a little gentle twist, but as I say, just to kind of transition here, whatever feels good for your body. And once you've gotten that little bit of movement in every which way that feels good. We will actually come back to seated. So that was just a way to <laughs> make the transition from, for me anyway, a rather busy morning and a busy weekend to the mat and to the practice. And then just taking a little time here, the feet out in front or legs crossed. And I'd like to do a little fluttering also right off the top. So we'll sit nice and tall. So if it's super warm where you are, you can ooh, create a cool breeze. If there are things that you don't need, you can swoosh them away. And just take those deep breaths. The wrists are relaxed, the arms are extended. And then inhale, exhale, float the fingers to the earth. And I always like this just a little bit of time with the fingers touching the solid ground beneath us, just to feel that we are coming to our designated yoga spaces, perhaps in July in real time, if I end up recording this correctly, <laughs> perhaps doing this practice at another time, who knows when. But the breath here is our focus. You can feel the shoulders relaxing, the face softening. And whenever you're ready, bring the hands to the knees or thighs. And just stay with the breath. Belly breathing, three-part yogic breath, ujjayi breath, that's the breath with sound, if you care to take that. And as we quiet the body and the mind, we can attune to more subtle sensation. So it's really important just to take the scan without judgment, without analysis, just to just take note of where we are today as we come to our practice. And I know it's very warm um, where many of you are. So, you know, bring that into your awareness. Um, any other situation, just always modifying if needed. Adding more if you want a more active practice. We'll go ahead and lift the hands towards the sky. A moment to open towards an intention, an affirmation, perhaps a dedication, sending good energy out to the person or group of people who would benefit from it today. And with our intention set, big breath in. Give a little clap if you want to. Hands to the heart one more time. Big breath in. And hands to the heart. And then from here, we'll go ahead and stretch the legs out. And I think a little bit of the wave is in order for the day here. So reaching up, hinging at the hips, coming forward, pulling back and around. And you can go faster than I'm going or slower or at this pace. And we'll do one or two more rounds. Okay, coming up, reaching up. I'm going to do a few different um, uh, little V for victory moves here today, just inserting them in at different points in the practice. It's uplifting. It's kind of a nice way just to feel the heart opening, the breath deepening. And then into our diagonal stretch, so side to side. One arm going away from the other and across to the opposite leg or ankle or little toe, wherever you get to. And then we'll come up and we're gonna have one leg straight, one leg bent here. Doesn't matter which side because we'll be doing everything to both sides. Take a little adjustment to the seat and then let's draw the bow. So we come down towards the ankle and pull the arm up, release it back. And there are, of course, shoulder situations which may make this 
not as comfortable for some, so that's where you would modify. Do two more. And then I'm just gonna keep the arm back there. I might even turn my gaze, give my neck a little stretch. I'm gonna kind of move and take the arm up so I can look up a little bit. And then we'll plant the hand that's been lifted and you can stay on the floor and stretch as I'm showing here or come up off of the floor to a little half wheel or to Mandavasana. And it's always a chance to look around, maybe move the top arm. And coming back, now if you would keep your legs as they are, one leg straight, one leg bent, but bring the bent leg up, okay? And we'll just kind of adjust here. So you may know what's coming. We're gonna support ourselves a bit and take some seated leg lifts, <laughs> actually one on each side. So I find this to be quite a challenge. You'll really feel your quadricep muscle working hard. Okay, keep breathing, keep breathing. You might not need your hands. You can bring the hands to the shin maybe. Good, we'll take a modified upward plank after you bring that leg down. So one foot to the floor, one leg straight, pressing up. And if you wanted more intensity, you could take the straight leg, flex the foot and go up and down with your leg. And actually, you know what? Let's do a little figure four. I have something planned later and this will be a warm up for that. So I'm taking the ankle to the thigh and then coming back down. Ooh, I wasn't planning this, so <laughs> feeling the stretch early on here. And then we'll straighten up the legs. And before the second side, a quick little round of propping up the sky. Okay, point the toes as you press through the palms. Ooh, elongating through just about every part of the body. Flex the feet as you bend the arms. And just continue a couple more rounds. Great, so we'll prop the sky up here. And then release will be in staff or stick pose. And we just want to do everything to the second side. So one leg straight, one leg bent. On your second side, adjust the seat a bit. Okay, and then we have our archery practice, coming down towards the ankle, pulling the arm up and back. And just continue at your own pace. The knees can be a little tricky sometimes in this position, the bent leg especially. So that would be another area to perhaps be mindful of. Okay, we're gonna hold the arm in an extended position. So it's a little hard to see on this side from the view on your screen, but you can look up or kind of back over your shoulder and just take a little time. Great, and we'll come back. We're gonna bring the knee up, but keep the leg straight. You can adjust the seat again if you need to, kind of tilting the pelvis forward. And then seated leg lift side two. <laughs> Say thank you to your hard working quadricep muscles. You can have hands here. I kind of like the hands to the shin. I'm going to hold here just a little bit longer. And breathe. Yeah, when you start feeling that little shaking going on, come down and bring the hands behind your hips. Lift up to your upward plank. One leg bent, one leg straight. You can add a little lift and lower of the straight leg if you want to. And then why not a little figure four? And you can stay lifted for a good little bit there or come right on down as I'm doing, which is a pretty deep stretch. <laughs> okay, we've gotten the sky propped up already. So we'll come out of the figure four. We'll take one round of the wave to neutralize. We're gonna get into boat pose today. I didn't forget. And in fact, I remembered a variation that we haven't done for some time. So you could take your traditional boat, that would be great. Um, this actually is rather challenging. I'm gonna watch out for the wall. Um, the variation is the one where you tilt a little to the left, take both legs towards the right front corner of your mat, back to center, and then to the other side. <laughs> now you wanna have enough padding for the sits bones. And you know, if you can do it, I don't know if I can, but without um, hands to the floor, that's like the super duper challenging version like a little touch down with the fingers to the mat, just for stability. So I'm gonna keep this going a little bit. Keep breathing. <laughs> Take the traditional boat if that feels better. And then we'll just come back. We're gonna take an upward table to take a, a counter stretch here. And because I do like to add weight bearing options, you could do a little tricep push up, listen to your wrists, listen to your shoulders. 
you know, three or four usually is great. And we'll come down with our feet together, soles of the feet, the bound angle. And a moment to sit tall, maybe move your head. And let's go ahead and release the hands from the ankles and turn the palms up as we inhale and down as we exhale. And remembering what I was describing a week or so ago, uh, for those seeing me in real time, just the balancing of effort and ease, which is an important part of our practice and hopefully can translate into how we live our lives as well. So we will prepare to come onto the knees next. And I have a gesture here, which is a little different. So we'll come on up. And this is one where we're going to um, pat the fingers to the sternum and then open wide. So we can inhale, lift the gaze here, tuck the chin a little, tap the sternum gently here, and just find your own pace. Inhale, exhale. And the contact of the fingertips to the breastbone in, um, I believe it's Qigong, uh, is said to be calming. It can release anxiety. It can help us to deepen the breath. Inhale, exhale two more times. Great. And then how would it be to engage the tummy and take one arm behind your head? So this is kind of the cow face um, arm position, the other arm behind your back, and just take a side stretch here. Ooh, it's a little different with the arms in this position. And then just reverse the arms and take your side stretch. I'll turn so you can see that to the other side. And then back to center, bring the hands to the floor. We'll get into our first downward dog. You can always do child's pose or forearm down dog instead. So a little walking of the dog, maybe a little lifting of the heels, bending the legs to get a bit more traction. And we'll go into our familiar flow in a moment, which will be down dog to plank. So give yourself a little more time just to stretch. Relax the head so the neck releases. And then you can always come to child's pose or join me walking the hands forward to prepare for shoulders over the wrists in plank. Back to down dog. Two more times. Plank pose. So familiar to many of you. This flow, which I enjoy most days, down dog. To plank. This will be our final plank. I have some more coming up though, so no worries. <laughs> um, we're not done yet. Bring yourself to child's pose. Relax, relax here. If you can, bring your forehead all the way to the floor. And just take deep breaths. Whatever's going on in your life and the world, just know that you know this is a time where we can just release tension, anxiety, uncertainty. And feel ourselves in the present moment. We'll come up slowly because our heads have been down. Let's do a quick V for victory again. <laughs> and just that uplifting gesture. And then we'll come to all fours. And guess what? I'm going to get into our donkey kicks, which I know I do regularly, but I think these are pretty effective for activating the gluteal muscles and hamstrings. So it doesn't matter which side I happen to have my right leg uh, starting first. And kicking, kicking, kicking. Okay, and then let's hold here, extend the leg and take your foot, if it's your right foot, take it over to the left, look over your left shoulder. Come back and then curl your toes under and we're gonna go right into the donkey toes. This is the same side, so I'm doing the same side, both versions, donkey kick, donkey toes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then coming down to the knees, lifting up just for a big circle, breathing in, breathing out. We'll get those donkey kicks and donkey toes to the second side. Okay, so for me, the left leg. Now having the foot flexed kind of activates the leg a little more. And, um, you know, if you happen to be a dancer or you're just not used to flexing your foot, you might end up pointing your toes, which is not a bad thing, but I just prefer to have the foot flexed. Okay, and then we're going to come on up for the donkey toes. So my supporting leg stays bent. I'm off of my heel. I'm kick, kick, kicking. Okay, now we'll come down. We'll be in down dog. So walk it out. 
this I know is um, pretty vigorous to add all these planks right off the top here. So please do come to child's pose if you prefer, but I have been doing spider plank for a couple months now and I'm pretty fond of it. So one knee towards the elbow and then the other. Good, and then child's pose or downward dog. And we'll get into a low lunge. So if you're in child's pose, take another second or two and then decide if you wanna to come to table or downward dog, lifting the right foot and bringing that foot through. Now we'll take a little time to transition here, coming onto the left knee, breathing in and breathing out. We're bringing the hands to the floor or to yoga blocks. And then the knee can stay to the mat or lift. We'll just elongate and breathe and stretch and enjoy, I hope. <laughs> and then a variation that I like quite a bit wiggling the right foot out, maybe bringing the left knee down to start. We're gonna plant the left hand and rotate to the right. Now you can stay just like this. You can take the right knee out a little bit. You could lift off of your back knee if you wanted to. I think that stretches a little more in the hips. I'm gonna lift my right arm and then just play around. You can wrap the arm around behind your back or have the hand to your thigh. And we'll unwind from this very deep stretch. And once more, please come to child's pose if you prefer, because I know all of this is a little more active maybe than some people need or want today, but I'm kicking right up to a three-legged dog and my foot may be out of the screen, but this is also called down dog splits. If you felt like it, you could do a plank pose with the legs still lifted and maybe just two of these. You could do more if you wanted to. <laughs> or just hang out and enjoy the down dog splits. It's kind of a fun place to be. Okay, it will give us time for everyone to take a child's pose here. And last week, maybe I was tapping my fingers, not being impatient, <laughs> but just finding this is a way to kind of relax the hands, especially if you've been active with your hands recently. And you can patter the fingers or softly interlace the fingers. And just settle your body. And we do have another side of the lunge to do. So you can come to table or downward dog. And then the left leg will lift. We'll look towards the top of the mat, step that foot through. Take a little time to just kind of set your lunge up here. Good, hands to the floor or to yoga blocks. So you can lift off of the back knee, lift the chest, and just feel what you feel in the hips, through the spine, and shoulders should hopefully be relaxed, not hunching up towards the ears. And then we'll bring the knee down, perhaps for this transition and adjust your left foot. We're gonna be rotating to the left, so my back will be to the screen. I'm gonna start with my hand to my knee and thigh area here, and then take my knee out a little bit, reaching the left arm up, maybe wrapping the arm behind your back, <laughs> maybe feeling a sort of stretch that you haven't felt for a while. This gets into a lot of different areas. Okay, unwind, and I'm gonna go to that three-legged dog, down dog splits. You can go to table first, and you can skip the splits if you're not in the mood for it but it is a nice little stretch and you can just relax the head here and stay in the three-legged dog or take one, two, or three rounds of three-legged dog to three-legged plank. Okay, and then we'll come down and just one more stretch. Um, we've been on the hands quite a bit, so let's come on to the forearms and we'll shift back and forth our modified puppy pose. And then just for fun, a little scorpion pose. <laughs> and this one, you know, we're on the forearms, we lift one leg, point the toes for this because you want to have your little scorpion tail, lift the knee. And if it's your right foot, take that foot over to the left, look over your left shoulder. And once you feel well stretched on the first side, come back to center, lift, point your toes, take your knee up, and your foot over. If it's your left leg, it's going over to the right. 
Look over your right shoulder. And then we'll come back. Now you could settle back into puppy pose, or since we're on the forearms, take a forearm down dog. If you want to or after practice, I'm not going to do this, but you could shift from down dog to plank on the forearms. Otherwise, kind of hang out here for a bit. And then we will have time just to cool down, rest and release before we come up to standing. And it may be you want to stack your hands and support your forehead. If you have an active mind or lots been going on, just choices and decisions and things like that, it's nice to just feel that contact with the third eye point between the eyebrows, just to quiet the busy mind. And relax the senses. And we'll come up slowly. And let's do one more V for victory. Just lifting the chest, opening the heart, embracing the day. And then each person choosing their preferred trajectory to come up to standing. So you could do one more down dog. We've had a number of down dogs in the practice already. So you might choose to come up through table or maybe a low squat on the balls of the feet here. And then as you do make your way up, just nice and easy, a reverse swan dive. I'm going to adjust my screen. And then I'm going to share a mood board that I did the other day. It must have been Friday. Today's Monday. <laughs> Let me just do one more thing to my screen here. Okay. So this is the, oh, my head seems to be cut off. Maybe I don't need to have my head in the picture today. Um, this is the mudra that begins like a uh, prayer position, and then we cup the hands and we bend the thumbs and put the tips of the thumbs inside the cupped hands. And I said that I think it's called um, Sakshi Mudra. And it's mudra, really, I think, of contemplation. It brings us inward. You might feel the heartbeat, feel the breath. And it supports the practice of Svadhyaya, which is a fun word to say, and it relates to self-reflection, self-observation. It's just a tuning without judgment to where we're at, at any given time on any given day. And then from here, we'll release the hands, have your eyes open, we'll do a few half sun salutes, breathing in. Exhale, bend the legs, fold forward as you breathe out, and just continue like that at your own pace. Inhale, and exhale. I'm gonna do one more. It will come all the way up. I'm gonna repeat just a side stretch. I'm just holding on to one wrist here, a little swaying like the bamboo. I'm going to do a gentle standing twist, bending the legs a little bit and rotating because we're going to have a deeper twist in a moment. Back up, inhale, exhale, twist the other way. And for fun and games <laughs> on this Monday in July, if you're in real time with me, we will practice lifting one leg and I'll turn so you can see, so you can stay just like this. If you want to amplify a little bit or intensify that experience, you can go up and then back to where you started. See how your balance is. And then second side, we'll have another balance in a little bit. This is just kind of a check-in. So stay here, use furniture if you need to. If you want to, lift the foot up, lower down. I'm not really counting how many times, it's usually around five give or take. Get both feet down, we'll retrieve the moon from the sea, bend the legs, scoop down, find that bright orb of light in the ocean and toss it back up in the sky. One more time, inhale, exhale, and then bring the hands to the belly and pause for just a moment. Feel the warmth of the body, the chi signal, the sense of your prana, your chi, your life force circulating within. And then we'll come to the top of the mat. Now we are going to go down to a low lunge and do a little bit of a flow here. And just given how my screen is, part of me may go out of the screen for a little bit, <laughs> but I'll be describing what we're doing as we go. So we'll take standing mountain pose here. And then we'll drop the arms and lift as we inhale. 
We'll fold forward. I'm going to take the left foot back. You'll see why in a moment. And come down to that low lunge where we've been before. Lifting up the arms. You could stay just like this or take a bit more of a back bend, maybe energizing the fingers and the hands. And we have done prayer twist recently. I wanted to get back to it today. Uh, it could be palms together, your left elbow to your right knee. Um, I've been enjoying a fisted hand to a cupped hand, okay? And it could be either hand that's fisted or cupped. My top hand is fisted. So you get some good leverage there. I'm gonna wiggle my foot forward so the knee is over the ankle. And then I'm going to lift off on my back leg, but that is optional. Okay, so find your prayer twist today. Nice steady breath in this present moment together. Okay, we'll unwind. Now here's something I don't do a lot of in the um, Zoom practices online, but we're gonna do a little flow so you can come to plank or modify with the knees down. And if you care to join me, we'll lower to the belly and roll the shoulders back, come up to Cobra. A very brief child's pose just to stretch out. And then to downward dog, another brief moment to stretch. And some of you may look towards the top of the mat and hop forward. I will take some steps so I don't make a jarring sound in my microphone. <laughs> All the way back to standing mountain pose. Take a couple seconds. Feel the heartbeat. And we're going to keep that heart going a bit by moving right into side two. Dropping the arms and lifting as we breathe in. Holding as we breathe out. Good. Stepping the right foot back. Okay, so I know I usually start with the right foot, so it might feel a little different starting with the left. And you could stay here or have swallow cactus arms. Some people might take a little bit of a back bend, energizing through the fingertips. And then our prayer twist, traditionally palms are together, but maybe you want to have that fisted hand, cupped hand combination. The right elbow to the left knee. And for some people lifting off of the back knee, Right, so when we're warmed up here, it's quite nice to take prayer twist because we really get into so many different muscle groups. We're going to unwind and you can take a child's pose or join me in just one more flow. A table or plank or a modified plank down to the belly. Cobra. Very brief child's pose. And then downward dog, or any way you want to bring yourself up to standing. You can hop or take some steps and be mindful with that reverse swan dive. And we'll be standing for a bit, so I am going to adjust my screen a little. There we go. And we'll come on up. And let's do our Hakini Mudra. I've also been doing this quite a bit this summer. Fingertips touching, just a way to integrate what we've done and to feel that we can be keen in our senses and clear in our minds. Releasing, shaking out if you need to, taking the feet wide. And this one I did do outdoors the other day, and it's so fun when the breezes are blowing and the trees are moving with the breeze. So you can look outside, see if you see a little movement with the <laughs> breeze, if there is any. And if you don't, just channel your own nice, cool breeze. So we bend the legs, lift the arms, inhale, straighten as we exhale. A couple more times, inhale, exhale. Now bend the legs, and if your shoulders agree to it, interlace the fingers. A little more side stretching as you straighten up and lean to one side. Bend and go to the other side. And come back to center. And how would it be to take a little lion's breath? <laughs> All right, I'm not sure how this translates on the other end of the screen, but it's the one where we stick out the tongue, we go over the tip of the nose on the exhalation. So we'll do three rounds, inhaling, Exhaling, good, inhale, exhale, scary as can be, one more time, inhale, exhale, and straighten the legs here, feel the warmth of the body, breathing in, breathing out, five-pointed star, 
We'll take it into a warrior two and you go to your right if you want to be a mirror image. So find your stance, just a little check in that the um, knee is pretty much over the ankle, that the shoulders are not here, but rather relaxed. And we're looking over the fingertips, not you know totally oblivious of our hands, <laughs> but energizing right through those fingers. We'll take a side stretch. And we're not gonna hold here because we have a couple more side stretches to do. We're gonna come up and back to reverse triangle. And I think I'll do everything to one side and then we'll get to the other side. So back to the side stretch. Um, you know, I mentioned if you had a yoga strap, you could um, keep it handy. You could hold on to your yoga strap here. Mine is there, but I didn't grab it. So I'm gonna take this actually pretty um, energizing <laughs> combination of keeping the arms extended. And then I did think I would give the possibility too of taking the arm behind your back, rolling the top shoulder back. You could have your forearm to the thigh, your hand to a yoga block or to the floor. Okay, so we'll be well stretched out to one side. You wanna come up with care. Let's take that same reverse triangle. And then release, and we'll be making our way to warrior two to the second side. And just the little areas to check in with where the knee is, not dropping it in towards the big toe, but pressing it towards the pinky toe, engaging the tummy, leveling the pelvis, and energizing through the fingers with the shoulders relaxed. Just a steady breath. Just in this moment here and now. And then a traditional side stretch for a second or two to feel it out. And up and back to reverse triangle. And then fun and games with the side stretch. <laughs> so take what works best for you. Maybe take your yoga strap, hold tight to it with both hands or extend as I'm showing here. Ooh, so I think this takes a lot of strength in the supporting leg. It's the core. It's the opening of the top side of the body. And maybe add in the arm wrapping around behind so you can roll the top shoulder back. And just see what you see, notice what you feel. And then we'll finish off with the reverse triangle. And then back to a wide legged stance where we can, of course, do a coiled python, which seems to just be a nice finish to the wide-legged poses. So it's a semicircle, side to side. And actually, we haven't done a lot of forward folds today. So I'm gonna give you the option here of taking a little pause in the practice and holding five-pointed star. Or if you wanna turn the toes in a little, maybe interlace the fingers or take your yoga strap. And head on down. I'm going to do a modified forward fold, not going quite all the way and also bending my legs, but for a lot of people, straight legs will work. Ooh, try to really lift those arms up. And we don't want to get a head rush. So when you're ready to come out, take your time. We'll go back to our V for victory arms, but quite slowly. Okay, just feeling optimistic, feeling positive, feeling connected, feeling appreciative for this moment in time together. And then releasing, and let's heel, toe, step, or hop the feet together. Take a quick little pause, feel the heartbeat. Come back to your intention or your dedication if you have one. Then we're to finish with the balance and um, I'll give you, um, oh, let's see, I was gonna start with something here that we haven't done for a bit and then we'll get into the official balance. So I do have some furniture uh, if you want to hold on to something or a wall nearby. So we've uh, released the hands, we're gonna give a little shake. And this one is kind of good for the hip flexors and um, also of course works our balance. So I'm gonna just take my arms out and swing one leg, it happens to be my right leg. Doesn't matter which side and stay here or come to your figure four chair pose combo and hang out. 
Okay, you can do whatever you like with the arms. You don't have to lift the arms. I'll show a few possibilities. And then release, Ooh, carefully, <laughs> shake it out again. Second side, watch out for furniture people and pets here. As you swing your leg that was not swinging before. Okay, here we go. Now you can stay here or come on into your figure four chair pose combo. <laughs> and the hands can be interlaced or hands to your hips, whatever feels best. Takes a bit of concentration to stay steady in this one. And then we'll come out. And each person's choice of what to take to finish the standing practice. I'm going to do two half sun salutes down and up. You could take a forward fold or retrieve the moon from the sea. And come back to prayer position just for a moment. And then time for that chi wash, which would be possibly turning towards a window or a piece of artwork that inspires you or anything else. And just allow yourself to stand tall and to imagine, feel, visualize, clear, healing, positive, cleansing energy washing over you, through you, and around you. So if you don't have time for, you know, full yoga practice or seated meditation, if you just want to kind of shift gears to what I think is usually a better place. Just take even a half a minute of a chi wash, 20 seconds sometimes does it. Okay, so from here, we will be coming down and I'll just give you a heads up. I thought maybe I would sneak in the possibility of pigeon pose today. So for those seeing me in real time, it's not what I usually do on a Monday. For some reason, I think it's like a Friday type pose. I am going to give time for roller pole and rock and roll first. <laughs> if you care to sneak that in as well, you can go back and up, maybe extending the arms just for a little extra stretch. Roller pole, rock and roll. And we'll be seated as we come up from, from the rock and roll. And just enough time here for me to remind those who do not like pigeon that you have options <laughs> and you probably know what those options are but I will just describe if you know and love pigeon or at least like it you can go into it um, this would be a seated figure four we did the lifted figure four earlier and you could certainly do the figure four stretch lying down on your back also so I'm just going to do that to both sides just to show and also to kind of use it as a warm-up for pigeon it's an external rotation of the hip Oops, sorry about that sound that is somebody else's cell phone ringing on my computer. <laughs> Out of my control. Okay, so pigeon people, if somebody's not answering their cell phones, that's that. I put my microphone on mute, that was too much. <laughs> and it might ring again because it sounds like he didn't answer. But if you are not um, uh, opposed to pigeon pose, you can join me coming into it. It would be one knee coming forward, the hips shifting back. And I'm gonna turn so you have a little better view of this. Maybe taking that foot out to the side a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna keep turning. I'm okay being off my yoga mat, elongating the spine. Be mindful of your knee coming forward. I usually come onto the forearm. Some people may get their head all the way down to the floor or to a yoga block. So pigeon pose is a, you know, um, you either love it or you don't, or at least like it or you don't. <laughs> type of pose uh, can be great for a deep hip stretch, a release in the lower back, and kind of a contemplative moment being close to the earth. And just in a position, of course, that we wouldn't normally be in during the rest of the day. Now, I did uh, play around um, the other day with King Pigeon. And I have to be mindful of my back knee here being off of the mat. So I'm going to turn a little bit more. I want to give you a visual. With King Pigeon, we come up. And if you're comfortable bending your leg, you'll do so. And maybe you can reach around, ooh, find your foot with your hand. Reach the other arm up. <laughs> I was describing to some folks recently that it helps if you have long arms, which some 
you could do, some don't. Okay, this is the um, double king pigeon, I guess, holding on with both hands. So just for fun, if you wanna try that, and you may be in your traditional pigeon, you may be in a figure four, when you feel complete, I'll go back to the top of the mat. We're gonna just take a counter stretch in either table or down dog, shaking the right leg out a little bit. And then whatever other stretch you need before taking side two, I'm gonna just go back and forth, table to child's pose. Okay, and then pigeon folks, second side. For me, the left leg, bringing that knee forward. Shifting the hips back. Now I'm gonna take my foot out a little bit to the right. And I do need to be mindful of the left knee, especially because I've been doing some work on the floor <laughs> this summer and it really kind of worked my knee joint quite significantly. So be mindful is always key. We're elongate, come forward, maybe on the forearms, maybe your head all the way down to the floor. One side may be different than the other, so attune to that. And find your steady breath. Relax the shoulders. Just feel that release in the lower back. I'm moving my back foot because I have a little cramp in the arch of the foot. <laughs> sometimes happens in various poses. Um, I will show my best version for today of King Pigeon coming up. Okay. And then possibly bending the back leg. And you could take your left hand to your right foot or your right hand to your right foot. And whichever helps you to balance best, I guess, is the way to go. And reach your top arm up. This is a really strong stretch in the quadricep muscle. I'm gonna see if I can get both hands around for the Double king pigeon. There we go. Ooh. You may feel this tomorrow. All right, so we'll release. Have your counter stretch, either table or down dog, just stretching and shaking the left leg. And then coming, I'm going to come to table. I was in down dog. I'm going to give one more little shake here. And then I'm going to repeat the table to down or to um, child's pose flow. So quite gentle. We're going to start our cool down. Thank goodness. <laughs> Back and forth three times. And then we will just come on up and find a seat. We'll be coming onto our backs in just a moment, but you may want to just kind of recalibrate, shake out the legs. If you want to take a forward fold or do anything else here, that's great. And then when you're ready to come on down to your back, just make sure you have what you need for relaxation, a pillow or something to cover your eyes with. And come down with care, just as we did at the start of the practice, we'll bring the knees in and then kind of freestyle move here. Just going with the flow. Let's take just one final move for a bit of strengthening to the core. And we don't have to do a lot of this, but remember like you're holding the bar overhead. Your feet are flexed. Your legs are at a right angle. We extend one leg about three inches above the floor. I'm guessing three inches. <laughs> You'll know when you feel the right height, three, four, something like that. And the other leg. Now not really tight and tense with the hands, just gentle fists. If you want to take the arms back, makes it a little more challenging, I think. Arms fine, steady breath. Okay, so you can take a few more rounds of the strengthening set that I just showed, or come out of it and choose poses that would help you to feel complete in the practice. Bridge pose, maybe windshield wiping the knees side to side. And we will go ahead and just have a little more time here. Bound angle with the soles of the feet together, tucking the tailbone a bit is really calming. And just a nice way to kind of integrate all that you've done. Of course, happy baby is nice. And maybe a recline twist. We did the prayer twist earlier, but if you want a little more twisting, you can have a recline twist. 
I'll invite you to just begin to make your way into your uh, full rest <laughs> position. And that may be covering your eyes, possibly putting something over you or dimming the lights. And arms by your side, palms can face up. Just closing the eyes and take a nice full breath in. Exhale, release. So we can think of this kind of cleansing effect of the exhalation, just as we had in lion's breath a bit ago. Breathing in, breathing out. Frustrations, concerns, tensions, anything that's not serving us, moving it along. And allow the breath to find its natural rhythm. Nothing that we need to fix or figure out at this time, nothing to accomplish or achieve. We'll take the next bit of time in stillness and silence, digesting what we've done, simply dropping back, releasing, relaxing, and letting go completely. Staying a little longer in stillness. Appreciating just a sense of tranquility and peace within and around us. And our last couple moments here, just maybe attuning to your body, but Still in a place of calm where you could just notice if there's any last thing you want to soften, release, or let go of. Maybe a little muscle tension somewhere or just a little thought that's still hanging on that we don't need to carry around with us. Just really soften, release completely in this last final moment. And then we can begin to reawaken. And we'll just take those little stretches to fingers and toes, hands and feet. And I was in person recently, which was a big pleasure doing yoga um, uh, with some folks outdoors. And when I said you can make sound if you want to, ah, they really did, <laughs> which was fun um, on the recording here or on Zoom. I never know who's making noises or not, but ah, you are on mute. So yawn, sigh, growl, whatever you'd like to do. Take a full body stretch, maybe bring the knees in, rock a little bit. And we'll come carefully back up to seated. I'll give you time to get up, opening the eyes, adjusting to the light of day. And just considering as we come up our comfortable position, maybe turning the palms up, breathing in, turning the palms down, breathing out. Balancing energies, lightening and lifting, grounding and centering, effort and ease. One more time, inhale. And exhale. And we'll bring the hands to prayer position, Anjali Mudra. And a couple moments here to take in this good energy, to appreciate the chance to really just be in the moment, to move the body, focus on the breath. Come back to your intention, affirmation, or dedication now if you have one. And if you're joining me in real time, I'll have you stay on mute today. But we will conclude with one round of OM. So take it with me at home if you want to. Hands at the heart. We'll inhale to begin. OM. Shanti, Shanti, peace. And feeling the warmth of the hands at the heart center. Let's take that moment to bow the head to the heart, 
to acknowledge the light, the energy, the peace within. And then a moment to lift our gaze to honor the light, energy, and peace within others. Maybe you see them on your screen now. Maybe you're feeling the presence of others out in the world today. So concluding with that thought, a warm namaste to all. Thank you. Namaste. And have a great day. I wish you well.